The gap between Asus consumer accessible laptops like the VivoBook and the more premium offerings like the ZenBook tend to be pretty obvious. But it seems like that gap is actually fading away because they made a very premium S series VivoBook that rivals their own ZenBook series. I'm going to talk about the new Asus VivoBook S16, which is the S5606M, and this is the review for it. So let's not waste any time and get right into it, and you're watching The Adventures of Esper. Let's begin. Now let's start off with the first one. What's good with the Asus VivoBook S16? And I got to talk about the modern minimalist design and build. Because for starters, the Asus VivoBook S16 gets a more revamped design and this time around it goes for a minimal look overall, which I am a huge fan of. The matte-like finish all around with a clean Asus VivoBook text in this new typeface makes a minimalist like myself really love the laptop through and through. And not just that. The Asus VivoBook S16 weighs at 1.5 kilograms and for an all-metal laptop, that is pretty decent in terms of weight because it's light enough for a 16-inch laptop and has the hinge that goes all the way up to 180 degrees if that matters a lot to you. Now, because of this new all-metal build from the ground up, it is well built and sure, since it is thin, it might worry some if it would flex easily or if the display would break and so on and so forth. But ASUS has done the necessary to make sure its structural uh, rigidity is pretty good because it does have the uh, military standard 810H certification. Now, the display area and the lid does have a little bit of a flex uh, if you do flex it, but as long as you are handling with a certain level of care, the laptop will be completely be fine. Now, let's move on to the display itself, which is the new ASUS Lumina OLED display with Windows IR. Now, there's nothing to rave about ASUS equipping all their laptops with OLED displays because they are the only one in the market to offer OLED displays across all their laptops. Sure, the quality of the panel may vary, although not by a lot we feel, but the benefits overweigh the drawbacks, making them a great choice for laptops for various factors. You do get the higher refresh rate here, better colors, and most importantly with OLED and ASUS own technology, you do get like DC dimming and other better battery performance and experience while using this display on the move. I love content consumption on this display. And in fact, I took this laptop for a work trip to Singapore, uh, which you can actually check it out here because we got to check out the new VR headset, which I'll talk about in another video. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I have to say, this display on the Asus VivoBook S16 is pretty impressive for editing tasks when I needed to do some. Color work on this display is pretty accurate as well. And we do see a Windows IR based camera on the top. So that means facial recognition unlocking is going to make life easier for you to get in and get out of this laptop. Now let's talk about the battery life. As I mentioned earlier, I took this laptop to Singapore, which means I would spend a lot of time working on the laptop at every opportunity I can get, be it at a Starbucks or cafe or whatever, or even on the plane. Now, before I can go any further, I'm gonna let you know that this is based on my use case scenario, so your mileage may vary. So throughout the two to three days from Saturday till Monday, where I was based in Malaysia, and on Monday was on my flight to Singapore. I was running on a single charge with the laptop and had an average use about three to four hours per day. And on Monday, as I flew to Singapore, landed, got to my hotel, the laptop still had about 28 to 25% left. I consider this to be a very good battery life. And while the processor powering up the laptop isn't necessarily a low powered one because it does have its spunk, um, it's surprisingly efficient in handling tasks. And if you're going to get some light to moderate task on the move, the battery will last a fair bit. But if you do want to charge the laptop up, it uses USB Type-C and it does come with a 90 watt adapter for you to charge. Although you can actually find GAN based chargers or GAN based adapters to be rated at the same wattage to replace these and have a uh, even more lighter hand carry. Now speaking of performance, the Intel Core Ultra processor in general have that appeal to it from a performance standpoint. Now powering this VivoBook S16 is the Intel Core Ultra 
5, 1 to 5 H with 14 cores and 18 thread with 16 gigs of RAM and for graphic it relies on Intel Arc graphics. Now Intel has the scale of how AI and performance worthy their laptop processors can get. Honestly forget about that, we are going to do our own benchmark to show the score and you can actually take a look here. Now based on the score, it's safe to say that for a laptop with this processor it performs way too good and when you translate to real world experience it does live up to your expectation. Now years ago when I said that I want a good processor that gives me the right type of performance and endurance depending on my use case scenario, this is exactly what I meant. Now during the same trip I was on, I installed Lightroom Classic, played Honkai Star Rail at its medium settings, uh, did a bunch of multitasking with Word, Chrome, Spotify and Netflix uh, running almost all the time and boy the performance was fantastic. Now the Zenbook I use which has the 1165G7 processor with a discrete NVIDIA GPU does have its hiccup with Lightroom but not with this VivoBook S though. This is pretty good, sure. The processor doesn't give you enough power like the Ultra 7 or the Ultra 9, but for a base or the gateway to the Ultra processor, uh, to perform this good is already an indication that the new Ultra processor lineup is heading in the right direction and giving consumers the experience that justifies the price they pay. Now, enough with the performance, let's go to experience starting off the keyboard. Now the keyboard here used dish keycaps with a 1.7 millimeter key travel. Now usually whenever a brand uses the word like dish keycaps, it's supposedly uh, to uh, type on uh, as it's supposed to match your fingertips. So you do have like in curve, uh, so when you apply the pressure, it feels very natural. Now you won't be able to tell the difference. However, coming from a laptop that has a flatter keyboard, the typing experience on the ASUS VivoBook S16 feels a little bit more natural. In fact, we typed the entire review on this laptop and it was really, really a great experience because the gap between the keycaps was also ideally positioned. Now, the trackpad on the other hand, it just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This time around, it looks like someone is about to build a 5,000 square feet house on it. But I have to say the trackpad um, is uh, equipped with uh, Windows precision drivers and the clicks feel solid. But since it's too big, sometimes when I click, I realize that I'm not on the left side to click it. But yes, big trackpad makes you forget about having a mouse when you're in a tight space. Now there are things that could be better with the VivoBook S16 and I will start off with the I.O. Now the I.O. ports on this laptop is amazing. You do get two USB type C's, two USB type A, a HDMI 2.1, a headphone microphone combo jack and all that. But my issue is that the USB type C, uh, both the ports are on the left side and the USB type A is on the right side. Making it a bit harder to use, especially if you do have devices that tends to block the USB type C, you won't be able to access the other port, making it completely unusable. Now, as for the other ports, they are all right, but I do wish they realign this port, maybe put the USB type C one on either sides for making charging and data transfer easier and to make the whole process and the whole connectivity a lot more better. Now, it does have a micro SD card slot, but replacing with the SD card slot seems uh, a right step ahead because my reasoning for this is pretty simple. Uh, if consumers are going to opt in for this laptop for light editing purposes, you probably would want a full size SD card slot over a micro SD card slot. Oh, and also not to forget, this laptop is an absolute fingerprint magnet, so you probably will have to wipe it down all the time. But despite all of that, if you told me that for the price of 4,699 ringgit, I get a laptop this good which offers a great 16-inch display, beautiful uh, keyboard typing experience, a huge trackpad, Intel Core Ultra processor performance, and not to forget the build quality that comes along with it. Uh, this is an amazing treat. I can strongly recommend the ASUS VivoBook S16 for those who want an accessible and nimble laptop for a price lower than 5,000 ringgit. However, if you're like myself, who isn't a fan of big 16-inch laptops, then you can turn your head to the uh, VivoBook S14 because at the price of 4,399, which is the starting price, by the way, and you get all the same experience, but on a smaller display, making it more portable, and I like that a lot. Both the laptop comes in this blue and black finish where the blue happens to be my personal favorite and uh, doesn't matter if you're going for the VivoBook S16 or the S14, 
both laptops get my thumbs up. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about this laptop, do leave it in the comment section below. We will answer as soon as possible. We do have other content coming down here uh, at our YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe. And if you want to watch this review in Tamil, the link down in the description below will lead you to our Tamil YouTube channel. I'll catch you guys in another video. Until then, this is Prithviraj signing off. Take care and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye.